Today I'd like to talk about In the Flesh and why it should never have been cancelled. In the Flesh is a BBC3 TV show. It's not a very well known TV show and it got cancelled sometime last year, I can't remember really. Um, I only started watching it after it got cancelled so I already knew what was gonna happen to it but now along with all the other fans I'm trying to fight for it to go to come back because we really need season 3 because season 2 ended on a terrible cliffhanger. I would like to tell you about some reasons why I think it shouldn't have been cancelled because it's a very good TV show. First of all it's about zombies and I'm not really into zombies but this series is so good that I don't really mind the zombies. So basically there's an alternate universe uh, and it takes place in England where in 2009 uh, in December 2009, everyone who died that year rose from the grave and they turned into actual proper zombies who um, ate people's brains and people were forced to defend themselves. They were forced to kill people who they once knew. Then science, or like scientists, found a cure called neurotriptyline that needed to be injected every day so they would turn it back into almost normal humans. The zombies weren't called zombies because that would be an offensive term. They were called PDS sufferers, which stands for partially deceased syndrome sufferers. So like undead, only like a, a better a better word for it, I guess. PDS sufferers were eventually, uh, I guess, released back to their families. And um, four years later, 2013, is where this series actually starts. The main character is Kieran Walker. He is an 18 year old PDS sufferer, or well, he would actually be 22 now, <laughs> I guess, but he died when he was 18 years old. He committed suicide as a result of uh, severe depression. It's a pretty heavy TV show, I can tell you that. It's very emotional and it's, it's just so good. Karen Walker is allowed back to his family in 2013, only his family is from a really small village in the north of uh, England. And that village is mostly ruled, I guess, by the church and by the HVF, which is the Human Volunteer Force. This force was created to fight PDS sufferers to, or like rotters as they like to call them. So this village is very anti-zombie. This is where the story is mostly about, about Karen coming back to this conservative village, I want to say. There are many reasons why I love this TV show, such as the music, the uh, soundtrack is amazing, Keaton Henson is perfect for this TV show, his voice, his lyrics, it's just all so perfect and so heartbreaking. <laughs> the settings are really really beautiful too, the, the rural England, very beautiful, very sad, everything's a bit sad and like faded colours, everything is really well done, it's all very beautiful and it all fits with the theme of the TV show, I think. The great cast, there's a really great cast, they're really good. Luke Newbery is just so cute, <laughs> he's so good as Kieran, he's a very good actor. There are two reasons why I love this show mostly and I would like to explain them a little more in detail than the other reasons that I've explained so far. The first reason is the portrayal of religion in this, um, in this situation, I guess. I'm a Christian myself, so whenever Christianity is misrepresented, in my opinion, for example, very judging or very ignorant, I just go like, uh, mm, it just, uh, I don't know. I easily feel offended when, when it comes to my faith. But that's not the case at all in this series. It does look very uh, negative, but when you look at it from the start to the finish, you, you get why it's done like that. It makes sense. It's also very logical that religion plays a really big part in this, as, uh, I mean, when people rise from the dead, where else are you going to find answers than in the Bible? It talks about rising from the dead and well, it's just so logical. I would probably do it myself. The only issue is the interpretation of the Bible. It's an issue right now. It's an issue... It's been an issue for hundreds of years, thousands of years, I guess. What makes this portrayal of uh, Christianity so great is the way it shows different groups who in, have read the Bible differently. For example, you have the church leader 
he's very anti-PDS sufferer. He thinks they are the sinners of the earth and they should be like eliminated, I guess. And the second rising uh, is going to be the righteous people. That's how he has read the Bible. Another group is a group of PDS sufferers themselves. They think that they are uh, chosen, chosen people who get to rise again. So they see themselves as kind of angels or like a better version of humans. So there's, those are really extreme parts of the spectrum of how to interpret the Bible. There are also people that are kind of in between, that are just trying to do what's right or trying to maybe ignore the problem, just stay away from it, which is also very realistic. And then there's of course science. Scientists are trying to find a cure, have to, have to find answers in science. Um, I think all of this is so realistic because if it were set in any Muslim country, for example, people would have tried to find answers in the Quran. I think that's very well done and I think the negative sides of Christianity exist in this world as well as in uh, the TV show. So that's also logical, again. <laughs> Everything is just so well portrayed. It makes you really think about um, how these conflicts already exist in this society. There are so many conflicts within Christianity itself. And that all has to do with the fact that every human interprets the Bible or anything differently. Seeing it in a very extreme and, I guess, fantasy uh, setting makes you really think about um, the real world. The second reason is the way the PDS sufferers function as a huge metaphor for literally any minority in any society. They are a group of people who are actually not people. They are alive, but they're not actually alive. They don't eat. They are different. They look different. They're always somewhere in between. They, they don't really belong with anyone. They're also constantly handled by people, if that makes sense. They are controlled, they can never do anything themselves. The scientists have conducted experiments on them to find a cure. The government is making laws about them. The government makes decisions about them all the time. I guess the, the citizens, the normal people, have opinions about them. Some people are for them, some people want to help them, some people want them away, some people are affected personally because they knew someone who rose from the dead. And so everyone has opinions about them and they are they are the object, that's what I wanted to say. All the others, the normal people, are the subjects. And I think you can just place any minority in any society in the place of these PDS sufferers. Take for example refugees right now. They don't really belong in their own country, they can't stay there because it's not safe. But they can't come here either because some people don't want them here or they don't have money or whatever, for whatever reason. They don't really belong here, they're just refugees from another country to us and everyone has an opinion about them people want them out of the country people want to help them people want to feed them and government has an opinion about them religion has an opinion about them you could also put lgbt people in this place um again people make laws about them people decide whether they live or die people decide whether they marry or not they are objects. They are being ruled by people. By watching this, you can really reflect on your own society and look at it from all sides. You, um, you get to look at it from religion side, you get to look at it from science, from government, from families who are affected themselves. It's, it's just very interesting and very well done. Very, very well done. I love it so much. <laughs> it's also very heartbreaking, so I'm just warning you already. It's, it's really emotional and very realistic for a fantasy series, I think. So those are my two biggest reasons why I love this series so much. So all these reasons and the fact that it ended up on a terrible cliffhanger, a terrible cliffhanger, so bad. There are so many questions that need answers. And there are so many fans that I've gotten to know through um, trying to fight for the show, to get it back. And... I think we all deserve at least a season three. So if you've seen it and you really want to help and you think, what can I do? You need to spread the word on social media using hashtags such as in the flesh, renew in the flesh, save in the flesh, in the flesh movie, because there was talk about maybe being a movie there. You can always 
mention Dominic Mitchell, who's the writer of this amazing show. He is still, after all this time, talking about it all the time. He's very passionate about it, which is great, because we are all very passionate. He's always very grateful for everyone's support. You can also make your own art, which a lot of people do. People make beautiful drawings or fan videos, like mine now, because we just really want to spread the word and we want a proper ending to our show. I'm gonna put some links in the description, such as a trailer, the uh, Internet Movie Database page thing, um, some links to people's Twitter that may come in handy. So I hope this has made you watch in the flesh and if you do please let me know what you think about it and or just let me know if you're gonna watch it because I would love to know what you think about it. I think it's very very beautiful and very good and it makes you really really think about big issues in this world. The representation of so many things, of mental illness, of yeah. I'm st I need to stop talking because I'm gonna give you so many more reasons and I hope you can help bring it back. Oh yeah, and you can share this video to make other people watch in the flesh so we get as many people as possible fighting for this show because it's a good show. Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Say hello to the camera. Oh. That's so cute. <laughs>